The Department of Environmental Affairs has rejected environmental impact assessment applications for car power ships South Africa. There have been growing calls now for Parliament to hold public hearings. In fact, civil society organizations have written a letter to Parliament asking for urgent public hearings around the risk mitigation independent power producers procurement program. They also want the decision to award preferred bidder status to car power ships to be investigated. The communities of Richards Bay, Ucha and Saldana Bay have not been given an opportunity to express their concerns about floating power stations which will be around for some 20 years. Let's get you up to speed with the story now. Liz McDade is the strategic lead for Green Connection. She joins us now via our video link in Cape Town. Liz, thanks very much for your time this morning, so early on a Friday morning. So as it stands, the car power ships deal is on hold. Is that safe to say? Um, good morning to you and your viewers. I, I think it would be safe to say that for the moment, it's a bit stuck. But they are, they are, have said they're going to appeal that decision. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, they have until the end of July uh, before there's the Department of Mineral Affairs and Energy um, comes up with their deadline, which is for financial closure there. Yeah, yeah. And in my view, that means they have to have all their ducks in a row, which means they have to have the environmental permit. Otherwise, the Department of Mineral and Energy should reject them too. I think let's take a step back just for the sake of our viewers, Liz. Give us, you know, your account of, of what the car power ships deal was meant to be for South Africa, ideally. So ideally, there was a process to get short-term power into the grid so that we, the lights wouldn't go off, basically, uh, and to help ESCOM. But in that process, um, in March... The car power ships seemed to win the most, the majority of the bid that was offered. Mm -hmm. And this raised a lot of questions amongst energy experts. And there were, not say irregularities, but sort of lots of dots that people were raising about the, the fact that they got exemption from local content. Um, there were issues around whether they had permission to, to actually moor at the ports. Um, and then from an environmental impact assessment process, that process was ongoing without or many communities were unable to participate and were raising concerns. And when we, um, working with coastal communities, we found that the issue of noise, which fishers had raised, mm. had not been addressed. And noise is very critical here because they are fishers dependent on the sea for a living and noise could disturb the fish, chase them away, disturb the nurseries, which would mean a dis total loss of livelihoods over a couple of years. Yeah. And here you have a car power ship, which is going to be anchored for 20 years. So there was huge concerns. And, and in my view, the role of the consultant in that case was to have taken those concerns seriously and studied the impacts um, and given everybody a chance to have a look at what they found and then place all that information in front of the decision maker um, to for them to make a decision yeah so, yeah yeah that was really what happened and and uh, we actually put in a complaint because we thought that the noise issue hadn't been uh, resolved and yesterday the department issued a well, I'm not sure what you mean, a letter, which mm. basically said that the authorization had been refused. So, so from the side of car powership, if my understanding is correct, are they basically arguing that, you know, this is the impact on the environment, um, the objective to put more power in the grid comes at a cost of this impact to the environment. It's also going to be creating jobs over that 20 year period. And so that sort of makes up for the loss of income from fishermen in the area? I, 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 I mean, I wouldn't really know what Carpa is saying in that regard. Um, they say they're going to create a few jobs. They say um, they're gonna provide power, which is the aim. But the problem is, can you say, that for those fishers whose livelihoods depend on this, that 
there isn't an alternative way to provide power mm. that doesn't involve destroying livelihoods, and we believe there is. Mm. And, and of course, destroying ecosystems in the oceans where the car power ships would be docked. Yeah, well, you see, this is something that, that I think we need broader discussions around. You know, when you look at some of these bays, yes, they are very vital to the marine ecosystems. The marine ecosystems are critical not just for uh, the sort of functioning of the planet, you know, sort of, and keeping us all alive, because remember, these systems are our life support system, but they also are important for livelihoods in a whole range of sectors. So the recreational sector, um, you know, tourism, um, nature-based tourism, uh, fisheries, you know, there's a whole range uh, that, of people who depend on the, the ocean to some degree or other. And um, when you bring in a potentially destructive project, you must really do your homework to make sure that there's no other alternative way of meeting that need. And in this case, there is. Mm. And also um, make sure that if there is going to be an impact, you must mitigate it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, if those urgent public hearings do go ahead, uh, which is what civil society organizations are asking parliament to ensure, you have to ensure that you know, the right people are taking part in those public hearings. And, and we see from what has happened in the past few months that that wasn't possible. Um, you know, the, public, the people who, who took part in the public hearings were the few who could get online because they were virtual hearings. So this is the problem. Um, uh, in our view, COVID is being used so as excuses as to not go out and make sure that you've consulted with people on the ground. So yes, there's 15 organizations that are, are calling on parliament to actually intervene in this matter. And we've actually suggested maybe there should be a, a ad hoc committee set up with different, different um, portfolios involved because it's not just an energy issue. It's not just an environment issue. It involves the transport authorities because of its being a port. And, you know, maybe we need to look at this thing holistically and not just in a one narrow way. Yeah, and then, then there's the issue, of course, around allegations of corruption and the reason why car power ships was granted this preferred bidder status. Yeah, so that one, I mean, we don't know, but it certainly seems that there's been a lot raised in the media around car power ships and how did they get to be preferred bidder. Um, so that also needs some investigations and, and car power should welcome that because yeah. then they should be able to clear their name. They can. Liz, in terms of, you know, if we look to how car power ships is operated in other countries, what do we know about that? Well, I think one of the things we have to think about is this is a, this is a ship. This is like a floating city type style. And so this ship sails in normally when there's been an earthquake or there's a big power problem and stays there for a, a little while, mm. a few months or a couple of years, then they sail away again because your system is back up and running. So putting them there for 20 years really um, makes the relationship between South Africa and the car power ships uh, quite a difficult one because what we saw in the recent media was in Lebanon, it seemed there were some accusations. Um, but what, how it played out was that L Lebanon didn't pay them and the car power ship stopped supplying energy. Yeah. So, you know, ESCOM doesn't have any money. So what happens if we sit in that situation? Is that the situation we want to get into? Mm. So, you know, it's, it's a difficult one, but I think um, what we want to be looking at is providing power that also grows our local economies. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the takeaway from everything you've said is that once again, we're back to what organizations like yourselves have always said, and that is that renewable energy is what we need to look, be looking for to the future. Yes, I think it is the future. And uh, the recent announcements by the International Energy Agency that we mustn't uh, look for any more oil and gas uh, exploration because of climate change is a very critical factor. Um, and so 
I think what is important though in South Africa when we we sometimes mired in doom and gloom is to say that yesterday was a good day for environmental governance. It was a good day for the for the application of the law because yesterday what we did see is the Department of Environmental Affairs apply their mind mm. and make what we believe was the correct decision. Mm. So there's a there's good space, but yeah, who knows? We are gonna be looking going forward and and I think that what we need in this country is a lot more people looking around and checking that things are going how they should. Yeah, absolutely. Liz McDade, let me thank you for your time uh, on the AIM report this morning. She's the strategic lead for Green Connection, and it's uh, one of the big stories, certainly in the energy sector this morning, the car powerships deal blocked by the Department of Environmental Affairs, uh, at least for now.